Ryan just said that he wants to start recording once a month. <laughs> You're going to put me on blast? Yeah. I'm just saying what I was trying to say, listeners, is like, imagine if we had like an hour or an hour and a half podcast or Who something. Who has time to listen to a podcast? But they could listen to it in like, they could listen to it one drive and then on the drive home. Do you know what I'm saying? I just threw it out there. Like we could go really in depth with like an hour and if it was going to be an hour, like, I doubt we're going to release, like, hour podcasts every week. I mean, we No, could. I don't want to do hour podcasts every week, but I also want to see you more than once a, once a month. <laughs> That's, like, a lot. That's a... Oh. Except Anyways. Katie's saying that she loves me. Okay, everyone, we are talking about part two of love. And date... Well, it's dating. 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 And it ties into love, though. Well, I mean, hopefully you date because you're in love. Exactly. Okay, so... We wanted to discuss from where we left off last week is yeah. limits. Yeah. So like this, this is interesting because when Katie and I kind of did a debrief uh, a couple of weeks ago and we were on the phone and we were just talking about all the different topics that we could talk about. And Katie, this is one of Katie's ideas was talking about the limits. And I know you brought up like checking your partner's phone and you're really passionate about this topic. So I want you to, I want you to lead this one. No, I'll just, I'll just put in my opinion because I don't really know what we're talking about with the well, limits thing. So what I mean by limits is kind of the conversation about when is, enough enough or when is something too much and you see this in couples right so maybe you're the couple that argues a lot when is it like okay you're just arguing all the time what do you do as a female as a male or as a couple in a partnership that you kind of realize what our situation is or our shtick like enough is enough so with limits I also mean recognizing the signs. The signs of what? Like red flags kind of red thing, Red flags. Right? Okay. Okay, I get that. We can talk about red flags, yeah. And then... Have you ever been in a relationship or a casual situation and there's been red flags? How do you recognize yeah. what they are? Because personally coming from an opinion of a woman, we're often told that we're drama queens or overthinkers or you know, take things too seriously that sometimes we maybe ignore the red flags or the worries we have in our minds. And then when is it? No, like I have an issue with this. I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but one of the things that I wanted to do my goal for January, 2018, you know, New Year's resolutions was to go to therapy because I had some coverage through work benefits. And I was like, you know what? I've never been to therapy. I want to see what it's like. I want to get to know myself better. And so I went. And one of the things that we talked about was red flags. And I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in the podcast. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, listeners. But I think it's an important point on the topic is that a lot of the times you ignore red flags when you're starting a relationship. Why do you think that is? No, and this isn't he. This isn't the therapist saying it to me. He's just saying in general this is what happens. And I think it's because when you start off a relationship, you have the rose-colored glasses on. And I even had a friend send me a meme the other day that said like it was one of those like Uber Facts accounts. You know, like the ones that say like the Daily Facts or whatever. And it was saying that people, when they're in love, they tend to ignore the red flags so much more than people on the outside because they're so enamored with them. And I don't know, maybe something to do with endorphins or something in the brain or whatever. Well, probably. Yeah, yeah. So you're ignoring it. So I think like you're just so into someone and you just want it to work. I feel like as humans, we want things to work out because it's so much easier when things work out than when they don't. So I think that you're just trying to make it work that almost you're seeing other things about them, whether it's their looks or their job or their ambition or whatever and you ignore kind of the little things because you want it to work because all the other things on the bo all the other you know things that you want to check off on your list of things that you like in a partner they all they all match up yes but there's all these red flags that yes. literally could eliminate and all then, the boxes and then also sort of interrupt you but also i mean you want it to work could mean a million different things yeah. for a million different people because it's never worked in the past because you've been heartbroken yeah. or cheated on or yeah. it's the first boyfriend or girlfriend that your parents like yeah. or he makes so much sense because the compatibility is there. There's a million reasons why we want it to work. Yeah. Or your friends said that he wasn't the right one so you're trying to prove it. You know what I mean? Like There yeah. are a million reasons why people want it to work. 100%. And what this therapist said was that a lot of the times people ignore red flags and sometimes those red flags are just 
kind of um, false alarms and they get married and they're super happy. But he said most of the time, those red flags are things that you ignore. And then before you know it, you're really serious in the relationship or married. And then all of a sudden, then you start really realizing that those things are things that are going to make the relationship not work. Yeah, they're deal breakers. They're deal breakers. That so, you weren't honest about with yourself from 100%. the get-go. And I think that that's what's important, that even on a first date, I think that you'll know. And I'm not saying you can't give someone a second chance, but I think if there are main things that are not compatible with you, I don't think you should settle. So and I if think you were to meet more, someone, yeah. Ryan, and you had... Um, 10 things that you didn't have in common with them, what would be your deal breakers? Well, I think, I feel like I may have mentioned this in a podcast episode too, but one of the biggest things would be someone that's condescending. I just, or someone that has anger issues. That's a big thing for me. Um, another deal breaker would be someone that uh, isn't close to their family, I think. Well, you know what? Okay, maybe I can't say it's a deal breaker because if they had a significant reason of why yeah, they were I close mean, to their family, yeah, I mean circumstantial, right? But if they have got good them. people that they're just not close with, then there's that's a red flag. It's like, why are you not close to your mom? I, obviously, there's reasons why people aren't close to their parents, and then I would look at it from a different perspective. But if it's just because you're not a nice person, then that's going to be a red flag for me. Um, someone that's mean to animals. Ew, but who's mean to animals? I know, but I'm just saying, like, if they were... I mean, if someone was mean to animals, like... It's like serial killer vibes. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe you don't like cats, but if you're mean to animals, that'd well, be really... I'd be really weirded out. Well, I'm interested to hear, like, what are your... What would be, like, the couple first things on a list of ten things that would be deal breakers for you? Um... I mean, gosh, I probably have so many... But then... Smells bad, I feel like. Another one I would add to my list. Like, if they smell bad, that's a deal breaker. Um. Okay, sure. Smell bad, but, like, doesn't execute proper hygiene. Yeah. Like, yeah. my boyfriend works with cattle, so cows. Yeah. And often he's, you know, like, mucking out their pens of manure. And so he works in a, you know, a stinky, smelly yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. Which is just he, the nature of his job. Yes. And he always, I'm not saying he always smells like the freshest cologne, but he never smells bad. Yeah. Hygiene, like he has the kind of hands, or you can tell he, he uses his hands for a living. That's how he makes his money. But they're never dirty. Like if he were to mm -hmm. run them underwater, they would run clean. But it's, you know, years and years of using them. So... People that just don't wash their clothes as much as they should or their bed sheets yeah. or their bodies. Yeah. That to me is like, it's not even that it's a deal breaker. I'm just not going to go there. You know, it's yeah. just like, I'm, I don't know. But I'm, you wouldn't know until you meet them probably. Well, yeah, I guess that's true as well. Another one would be not having a good relationship with their parents or mom. If yes. they could. If circumstances meant that you couldn't be like there was an actual reason, that would be different. Exactly. But if you just weren't close with your mom because, what, you didn't have the time, that would be weird as well. Um, a license. Yeah, like having a license is, if they don't have a license, it's a deal breaker. Uh, or what? Deal breaker might be too intense, although I know that's what we're talking about, but it would really weird me out, like which would make flag. me become skeptical, which m would probably make me find something wrong, and then I would... Okay. But like, uh, yeah, man, like I don't, I'm not trying to be old fashioned or sexist, but a man that can't jump in his car or his truck and drive, that would be weird for me. I think that's also the country in you though. Yeah. I'm just going to put that out there because I know what you're saying and I think it's sexy too. Like someone that is into cars and can drive because I love driving. But I think in the city though, there's so many well, people now. Well, that's different though. It's different. Like, and you're right. Yeah. And I did think of the city as soon as. You know, I said that, but it's different if you don't have a car because you live in the city. I'm not talking about ownership. I'm talking about not knowing how to drive. Okay. So another thing that I wanted to address when we're, while we're talking about dating limitations is when is it okay, do you think that you should have your partner's passcode or should you even have your partner's passcode? Should you be able to look through their phone? Katie has a little bit of a grin on her face. <laughs> I feel like she may have a story or something. Um... I mean, yeah, I do have stories. I believe in the power of privacy to an extent. I mean, 
just because you're with someone doesn't mean they should have access to absolutely everything that is yours. That's why I will never take the person that I marry's last name. I've always been Interesting. That, I've always been that way since I was a so kid. So you'll always be Katie Jones. Always. You always would be Katie I Jones would to consider, me anyways. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I would consider hyphenation. And if I did have children, I would consider, you know, well, no, I mean, I wouldn't consider. I'd have the conversation of, okay, whose name do they take? I don't mind about that. It's the whole, you know, you give up your name and your identity. So... I do believe in, like I said, the power of privacy. But with that said, I, uh, yeah, you should know how to get into your boyfriend's phone, your girlfriend's phone. You should know what numbers to press onto the screen to access his phone. If you are going through all of their personal stuff when they're sleeping or in the shower or anything like that, then then, you may have an issue. Then you need to take a step back and go, like, what am I doing? Why do I not trust them? Exactly. But. I, at any given time of the day, can open my boyfriend's phone. Yeah. And he probably doesn't have a problem with that. Absolutely not. And he knows it as well. I just recently changed my um, my cell phone password or unlock password, whatever. Passcode. Passcode. And I told him right away when I did it. So this is how you get into my phone now. Because I don't have anything to hide, right? I think he probably doesn't even go through your phone. Oh, gosh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, but I feel like you go through his phone. But he could but, but it's not even like you. I don't think it's you necessarily doing research. Although I do think that maybe there's a there's a little piece of you that may do a little research sometimes. But I think that for the most part, probably just be like, you know, he's making something to eat and his phone's by you and you don't want to grab your phone. So you want to search something and you... Do you know what I'm saying? Look at your smile. You just want me to be like, I go through his phone all the time. Uh, oh, well, I mean, hey, do you want to open up to our listeners? Come no, on. I, on, I honestly no? don't because. Don't? No, I, I really don't because. And I would say this to you on and off the microphone, I guess. <laughs> I really, really don't because I massively trust my boyfriend. So as far as checking your partner's phone, you think that it's it's totally okay, but if you it starts becoming a trust thing, then that's where it's an issue. But some people though, Katie Jones may say that already if you feel the need to check your partner's phone, then that already is a trust issue. Yeah, I don't necessarily believe that or or agree with that, I guess I should say. Agree with what? If you feel the inclination to check something means that there's already a lack of trust. But some people would say that. And I know that's that's why, I mean, I've heard that kind of expression before. Yeah. I've people and humans are curious beings. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, you know, we walk down dark alleys and oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how you spell your how you spend your Friday nights, but I don't walk down dark alleys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I explained that incorrectly, but no, there are people that genuinely have never looked through their partner's phone and don't want to and don't need to. And that's fantastic. But you can't tell me as a person that's curious and, you know, we have in our own insecurities that if I ever felt like I wanted to, then that would basically represent that I have problems in my relationship. You want to every time they're not near their phone. You dig and dig and dig and dig, almost like you're trying to find something bad, then that's a problem. But people are people. And you can't tell me that because I've wanted to like go through something that I have problems in my relationship. I just don't think that's accurate. I agree. And the way that I see it is that I don't know if I really want to scroll through if I had a boyfriend, which, by the way, listeners, I still don't. Um, yeah, what the heck, guys? Like, yeah, why are you where are calling the, him? W- where are the men sliding into my DMs? The way that I see it is I don't think that I necessarily want to go through all of my partner's texts because I do think that it would make me kind of anxious because I, I would start overthinking it. I'd be like, oh, who's Joey? Or who's this or who's that? Who's Meanwhile, Joey? Joey could just be, you know. Do you know a Joey? No, I'm saying that this would be my boyfriend's but the phone. Joey just came right out of I your mouth. It just came out. It could be like an old co-worker of theirs who's straight so and married. So you haven't been burned by a Joey? No. Joey sounds like kind of a nice name. No, but it just like r- like just came right out without I don't hesitation. know why it came out. Maybe my boyfriend's name is going to be Joey. Who knows? Did you? Were you seeing a guy? No. Who's, okay. Named Joey? 
No, that screwed you over with a Joey. No, no. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, choose to believe you. Yeah, no, I <laughs> she rolled her eyes. Um, no, I don't I don't even know if I know a Joey. Maybe I do. I don't know. I know one Joey. No, and, I know. Is he th- nice? I feel like Joey's are nice. I um yeah, he's nice, I'm pretty sure. I okay. haven't Yeah. So what uh what I'm trying to say is that I but I do think that if I didn't know my partner's phone and they would always have to take the phone like say it was like uh search for this song and they had to like actually take the phone to type in their password before I could search for the song do you know what I mean if we're in a car or something I think that that would be kind of annoying it's like trust me enough that I can type in your passcode ignore your passcode and I can look something up you know what I mean and someone that's totally like yeah I look it up or goes to the other room and it's like my passcode is this and they're making dinner and you're doing the playlist off of their phone someone that can trust me enough for that now if someone's completely like my phone is my phone and that's my property and you don't know the passcode because there are people like that I know I never realized until our, that other Lowry episode from Teen Mom is like that I know I think she was did she talk about that at some point yeah she did I'm pretty sure with Javi it was something where like you, you know her phone was off limits, was it? Yeah, like that. Like she'll never feel the need to disclose her cell phone information to a partner. Well, let me tell you, there are people out there like that because when we did one of our other earlier on episodes, I remember someone coming up to me and like saying how they basically feel that that's kind of. I think this is what they said: something about it. It's an invasion of privacy, and that you shouldn't have to know your partner's uh, passcode and blah 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 blah. Which you know what? Fair enough. You can have your opinion. I just personally don't agree with that. And I think if my partner was like that, my phone is my thing and you can't go into it, I'd be like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, at that point, it's like... I think that's weird. I think it's... Personally, I think it's weird. And I understand that some listeners may think that it's not a big deal to not know your, your partner's passcode to get into their phone. I personally think that that's kind of a big deal. It's like even when a friend, when you're hanging out with a friend and they tell you your passcode, you feel kind of nice about it. It's like, oh, wow, they trust me. You know, so I just and feel also, like, that, like it why, ties into that. What you're gonna be with someone for a make up an, an arbitrary amount of time, like two years, yeah, and they don't know how to open your phone to change yeah. the song, yeah, exactly. Like that's weird. Or to search something up when you're in the other room and you guys are having a conversation and your phone is charging somewhere. Can I not go on your phone to search that up? We're a part. We're it's a partnership for a reason. I feel like in a partnership you share things. So I think that that's part of it. And Your I nose feel like looks good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's doing better, right? Yeah, it looks good. You don't have to just disclose every single thing about you because you're in a relationship if you don't want to. Yeah. And I understand people in privacy is, you know, a kind of conversation that people feel very differently about. Yeah. But... Um, if I was with someone for even a few months and I wasn't allowed to unlock their phone, red flag. I agree. So what's another red flag for you? Another red flag for me is the way that they treat you in front of their friends. I think that that's a huge red flag. If there's someone that acts differently when you're around and in front of their friends, like they try to be like the cool guy or the cool girl or they're kind of talking i mean i'm talking specifically from a perspective of a gay male and i'm talking to you because you're in a relationship with a man and so it's like if they act differently around their closest friends and they try to be a different kind of person or put you down or something huge red flag to me yeah and i've had that happen that reminds me of your weekend boyfriend yeah yeah so yeah. you know you were really weekend boyfriend yeah <laughs> but you know you, you were vibing with him and he was vibing with you and Things were going well, and then he kind of made fun at you at your own expense. Exactly. In front of his friends yep. to look cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt really crappy. And then you're like, what the heck? Who is yeah. this person? Who's it, Like, literally, who's this person? Because that's not the same person an hour ago who I was kissing on the couch who just made really nice nachos for everyone. <sighs> you, like, turned into a whole different person, and it's super unattractive. Yeah. So that's another red flag for me. What about you? What's another red flag for you? Um, gross feet. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, like hairy feet are you talking about? Smelly feet, toenails, what? Long, dirty toenails. See, I need to cut my toenails more often. They're not dirty. Do you have long toenails? They're not, they're not dirty, but like I do let them grow out a little bit longer. Can I see them? And actually my masseuse yesterday, he like, he like put 
I don't know if I should say this on there. He like put the sheet over top of my feet while he was doing like doing the massage on my feet. And last week he did it, or not last week, the last time Let that we me met see up, your toes. he didn't do it. Let me okay, see. I'm gonna show you my toes. But I don't. They're not dirty. Like they're actually not dirty. It's just <laughs> I don't feel it necessary to cut your toenails as much as your fingernails. Cut those, Ryan. Look how. <laughs> Ryan, oh my god, like, what? you're good looking, look how long that nail is. Okay, my, my big toe nail is like, I don't, it's no, just no, a little bit. No, that wasn't the one I was pointing at. Oh, which one are you pointing at? <laughs> the one beside your pinky nail. <laughs> it is kind of long. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, maybe I do have to cut my, okay guys, I'm learning more about myself and I need to cut my toenails. I'm going to do that. You know what? They are clean. They are I'll clean. give you that. They're, they're clean. They're not dirty or no. or discolored, but they need to be cut. Yeah, you have a good point. It's like those people that have the long, like, one fingernail. Those are cocaine users. <laughs> okay, so the final topic that I want to cover on this episode of dating is these new dating apps that are kind of and some of them aren't new some of them just flopped because of the way that they were doing things but i want to talk about them because they do things in a unique way so i remember hearing this radio ad for and i think it was called an app called like local for love or something anyways i couldn't find it in the app store after this i wrote it in my phone and i like afterwards and i couldn't find it and i'm pretty sure it's called local for love but anyways the idea of it was is that you would do a video profile and you'd say like a couple of things i think maybe in like a minute about you about what you're looking for maybe some of your passions things like that and then as people swipe on the app that video pops up of you talking to them and then your video pops up to them of you talking to them and then when you I match, love that that sounds cool yeah and then when you match i think you actually do it I don't know whether you can talk a little bit first or what, and who knows, we can't really prove it because I can't find this app, but the way that the radio ad made it seem, and I think when I Googled it, I found something about it. It was basically that you would actually uh, do like almost like a FaceTime with the person as kind of like a first step before actually meeting. And then that would help you so you would know that they're not catfish, that they're not crazy. Maybe, I love that. Maybe their voice are, is sexy. But videos are so much like more informative than a picture. And I remember you and I talking about this, but like someone's voice is kind of a big deal. Yes. Talk about that. Talk about it for our listeners. Okay. So before I moved out West, I decided to give the whole dating app thing a try and I went on Bumble yeah. because my girlfriend recommended it. Yeah. Anyways, I met this person or spoke with this person on Bumble to which we ended up going on a date on and it was actually a really nice time. I think the both of us are... Definitely myself, I'm not sure on his end, but knew this is probably not going to go on to date two, but we did have <laughs> a really nice time. Okay. We had different, we had different interests. Yeah. Um, different schedules. A lot of our situation was different, but we had a good time. I'm okay. not knocking him. Okay. My point was though, on the afternoon before that date, I wasn't working and I was with my girlfriend and telling her about it, you know, I've yeah. been on like an online date and she goes, well, why don't I call him? Pretend I'm looking for a nail salon or something so you can hear his voice. I was like, oh, it just makes me nervous. And she goes, people miss call people all the time. It's not a big deal. So she had to like slightly convince me, but it was. Um, I, so point was sorry to hear his voice. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. a voice. You know, could change a lot of things. And Anyways, you, you were down because it wasn't your phone number. Exactly. And you would just be listening on speaker. And I wasn't down right away. Okay. Like, at all, actually. But eventually, she talked me into it. So, we did it. Anyways, she called and he was like, hello. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just looking for Kathy at the nail salon. And he's like, no, sorry, you had the wrong number. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Was it that bad? It was, like, probably not that bad, but, like, pretty bad. No, it was that bad. And I wanted to cancel based off his voice, but yeah. then I really didn't want to be rude. Yeah. Um. So. So you went, and his yeah. voice was the same, wasn't it, in person? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was that bad. And I just remembered it wasn't, it was after BC before England, just clarifying. Okay. Just to clarify in case anyone was wondering, um, all of zero people. 
Rude. <laughs> um, I actually had it one time where I was talking to someone on uh, an app and I got on the phone with them for a phone call because I thought they were really cute in the pictures. And I talked to him and it was the same thing where his voice just didn't fit his pictures. And because uh, I'm guessing this guy, you wouldn't have expected he had that voice, right? No, not at all. Yeah. yeah. And this guy just same kind of thing where it's kind of like, hi, how are you? Like, Ooh. not exactly like that, but, but it like, was a little bit like this. Yeah, and like he basically on the phone call, you know, because I'm I'm a journalist at heart, and I like to ask a lot of curious questions. Me as well, you know me. We we are both journalists at heart, at heart, and we love to ask those questions that other people may not want to ask. And somehow I got it out of him. He basically told me that he doesn't really have many friends, and that he doesn't socialize <laughs> with his roommates. And I'm like, oh, so what do you do, like? when you're not working because I think he just worked part-time or something he's like oh like I play video games in my room and Ew. and I was just like not attracted to it and I remember like after the phone call like shortly after because you know I'm pretty upfront about things we were gonna meet once I was back I was in California at the time and I was gonna we we're gonna meet in Toronto or whatever when I was back and I told him that like basically I just wasn't feeling it as more than friends and we never ended up meeting and it was one of those things where like if that was on an app and he was talking to the camera I would have probably already got the vibe that we wouldn't have. Absolutely. You would know right away. You yeah. would just know right away. And like that's – it's interesting because I'm going to bring this up again, I guess. Um, the first guy that I ever Hold was on. seeing – oh, sorry. Katie's just doing a spray break on her face. What is that? It's hibiscus coconut water. But what's it do by spraying it on Hydrates her face? Hydrates a bit because I get really, oh, really dry skin. You okay. can use some if you'd like. Maybe you'll have to spray some on my face. Yeah, go for it. I get really dry skin. So, Never mind. I'm perfect. Don't believe what I say. <laughs> the first guy that I was really into in university, shout out to you um, if you're listening. He, Him and I FaceTimed for the first time we ever met. It was within a couple of days of messaging on Tinder. And it was before I was going away for a week and... We wouldn't we we couldn't go on a first date right away because I was leaving for a trip and I just wanted to see how the connection was and we FaceTimed and I knew right when we FaceTime that there was something different about him and I felt the connection on video and it was one of those things where you just know and I feel like an app like what we we're talking about if you have a video like that you can kind of just feel the connection I know if it's a blank video of them talking to you maybe not as much maybe a little bit you're like oh they have a sexy deep voice or whatever or, or an accent right yeah. But I think that if you were to get on a video chat pretty soon, you can kind of determine whether you want to go on that first date or not. Yeah, okay. I, I do agree. But, like, I don't like to FaceTime at the best of times. Like, I don't. Really? I don't like that. Yeah, so. Interesting. I think, you know, I mean, anyone that puts, puts up a selfie, anyone that puts up a selfie or a certain photo, we're all aware that. That person probably took about a few of them and yeah. picked the best, right? Yeah. So I think just putting up like a, a video, however long it is, like a short video, about like who you are and what you look like and how your voice sounds and stuff, I think that's way more beneficial than just a photo you picked where you think you look really good. Um, but I think there's a lot of pressure with like FaceTime. Like you have to have a video chat before you meet in person. Like, yeah, in an ideal world, but I wouldn't want to just like video chat with a bunch of people I hadn't met, you know, like that. I, I don't feel like they've maybe earned that yet. I don't know. No, fair enough. And I feel like a lot of listeners would probably agree with you on that, where it's like, that's a bit too soon. And I'm pretty sure one of these apps, I don't know whether it's this one that I'm talking about, but there's another one that was all videos and it flopped. People weren't into it. So, yeah. uh, and then there's another app that I wanted to mention real quick, which is um, where you actually have blurry pictures. And yeah, you told me about yeah, this one. This one's and, cool. And you have to answer questions uh, about the person. I sorry, I brought I brought it up. Sorry, you asked the questions to someone to kind of get their vibe. It's called Taffy, and it's basically they have like a quote about them that they like, or they answer a question or whatever, and it's over top of their picture blurred. And as you communicate via questions on each other's profiles. The picture starts to unblur. That's interesting. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, it's about getting to know yeah. the personality first. Yeah. However, if I'm not attracted to you, I'm just not attracted to you. Yeah, we may be friends. Our personalities match. But I do think people have types. I'm sorry, but people have types. Of course they do. I've, people have types when they pick a dog they want to have. Yeah. Like, or what pizza they want. Like, we have types. I just, um, I get the concept and I get how it would work for some people, but... 
I don't even have time for, or didn't before, for dating apps at the best of times, let alone, I don't even know what you look like. Yeah. It's not, I'm going to talk to you and go back and forth and have banter and, and I don't even know what you look like. To me, that sounds exhausting. I get there's a demographic, um, especially people that don't shy away from dating apps and are willing to have 10 serious, consistent chats with people on Tinder or whatever. But for me, that's just like, I've now got to come across as witty and timely and thoughtful. <laughs> that's and I natural don't even know for what you. you look like. Well, that's true. I just want to end things off with a quote because I think our listeners have had enough for now of listening to us talk about dating. and lo- Actually, you know what? They love us talking about dating and love. They do. So this this is a quote that I came across the other day and I just love it. And it says, so plant your own gardens and decorate your own soul instead of waiting for someone to bring you flowers. It's from George Louis Borges. I don't know if I pronounced that right. But I just love that because it's about focusing on yourself and being the best person that you can be yeah, and kind of loving your yourself first happiness. before just waiting for someone because I do that all the time I feel like even now I'm just I'm waiting for that one it almost feels like maybe a piece is missing and I'm waiting for them to fill that piece but why not fill that within myself and my own happiness first you, you know? know what I get it and I was talking with somebody where I work about three weeks ago and she said I'm so tired of giving my husband these kind of hints you know like oh like You know, this is what I want. Yeah. So I just want him to make me a steak dinner. Like, I just really want that. You know, it's summer, it's barbecue. And I said, well, why don't you just make steak dinner then? Yeah. And again, that's tough, like touching into relationships and expectations. But plant your own garden and take care of your own soul and you'll have flowers. Yeah. If you're begging your husband for a steak dinner, go and treat yourself and have the best one without him. Yeah. Or make it yourself. Yeah. Don't wait around for people to um, to make you happy. Make yourself happy, right? Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Well, love is love, so no matter who you love, no matter who you love, or how so you identify, or, or how you identify. And uh, we love you for loving us. Oh, I love that. I I think you said it best. And we can't really end it any other way. Do you want to say it one more time? Thank you. For- <laughs> Okay, we'll just keep it out. We is. love you for loving us. There we go. Okay, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. We love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.